Lou Anarimo will be back with the Cincinnati Bengals for 2023, and that means the entire coaching staff is intact. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network here on Locked On Bengals, bringing you coverage of your team free and available anywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube every day. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can follow on your audio platform of choice and will be delivered to your devices every day when we upload our content. Today's episode of Locked On Bengals brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you ever dreamed, of going through the NFL draft and going through the offseason and trying to keep Lou Anarumo and Brian Callahan on your staff, Ultimate GM is the game for you. Go check it out with a 100% free boost to your franchise using promo code Locked On in all caps in the game in the App Store. Lou Anarumo will not be the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And I thought yesterday when we were recording, James, that it was a coin flip. And I don't know if it was ever that close with how quickly things came together with former Eagles defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon. Never left Arizona after the Super Bowl, had two days of meetings, or two maybe a day and a half of meetings, and then was the hire, mm-hmm. was reported prior to the Super Bowl that he was the target. And then they cut it down to finalists, and Lou's name was still there. And then things got a little dicey, at least from a perception perspective. But he will be back with the Bengals, which means that along with Dan Pitcher and – Brian Callahan and Troy Walters, all of the Bengals coaches on a staff that's been to two straight AFC championship games, will be back in Cincinnati in 2023. It's huge, 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 huge. Um, there was some uncertainty for sure. And in, in really the past few weeks, it just it felt like someone was gone. And it was a matter of, of who. And would it be a head coaching job? Would it be an assistant? And it feels like everybody's going to be back. Certainly all three coordinators are going to be back. And you did mention, you know, that they went with Jonathan Gannon. And I'm just really excited that he spent the past week and a half, maybe two weeks of prep for that Monday interview versus scheming against Andy Reid. And because, you know, those guys were, were wide open, wide open spaces. So that's my little shot at Gannon there. Maybe he'll be a really good head coach. I'm not sure. But, but – it's great news for for the Bengals because they're going to have some turnover on defense. Jesse Bates is more likely to play for, and just without looking at the cap because I don't know, Jonathan Gannon to me than Lou Anarumo next year. It's just how it is. I think he's more than likely out the door. I don't know where, and I haven't looked at the Cardinals cap, so don't quote me on that. But the point is, is you're losing that guy. You're probably going to lose out of Von Bell, Eli Apple, and Jermaine Pratt at least one more of them, maybe more, hopefully not. Hopefully it's just one more of them. And uh, a lot of people probably saying Eli Apple there. We'll see. But Lou Anarumo brings that uh, the experience and the ability, and we've seen this over the past two years, to, oh, this guy's out. Larry Ogunjobi's out for the Tennessee game and then the AFC championship game in 2021. Well, they still found a way. In, in dealing with different issues, different injuries. DJ Reader went down this year. They still found a way. It wasn't perfect, but he's found a way to overcome injuries. And when it comes to big-time quarterbacks, which you're going to face really almost every week in the AFC, it seems like, certainly in the postseason, he, he's fared pretty well. So this is a huge, huge win for the Bengals going into the offseason. There's a new offensive coordinator in the AFC North as well, and Todd Monken, who yep. is known for his ability hire. to maximize his personnel and scheme up mismatches. And it's great to have Lou Anarumo back yes. to have continuity on the defensive side of the ball in a year where the Ravens are going to have significant changes, one would imagine, going from Mark Roman to Todd Monken on the offensive side of the ball. Just a, another current event happening. But you talk about the quarterbacks that the Bengals will have to face. The Houston Texans have an early pick. They could have a new quarterback, but and we'll see what happens in Baltimore, but it's going to be Bryce Deshaun Young. Watson. It's going to be whoever's a, whoever's a quarterback in Indianapolis who will also have a new quarterback. Might be Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud Maybe. on the Bengals' schedule next year, depending on what happens in the draft. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith, if he's back in Seattle, 
after his renaissance year. But, you know, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, yep. we're getting there the you big go. dogs here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kyler Murray. <laughs> And the and the and the uh, big dogs, the Gannon, yeah, well, and, and the Jonathan Gannon led <laughs> Arizona Cardinals. Trevor and I Lawrence. like Kyler. I like Kyler for what it's worth, but it's just kind of funny. That's all. Trevor Lawrence out there too. Another matchup with the San Francisco 49ers and the Kyle Shanahan offense. So it's not just quarterbacks; it's some of the coaches as well. Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan in the same year, in addition to Josh Allen. It's it's always good to have continuity on the defensive side of the ball when that is their bread and butter. So much. Trey Henderson, DJ Reader, Chidobe Abuzia, Jesse Bates, all these guys, Logan Wilson, great players. But no Micah Parsons, no, no absolute stud all pro superstar. There's no Jamar Chase on defense, right? Sure. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. They have instead a unit that is a lot of good players that really understand what they're doing. And the result under Luana Rumo. More often than not, there's always that one weird game a year, I guess. The last two years anyway, the Mike White game, the first Cleveland game in the last couple of years, um, the Jacoby Brissett game, I mean. So there's always a couple with Lou, but then when it matters, Josh Allen, the Patrick Mahomes efforts, the, the efforts against those really good offenses, those really good quarterbacks, Lou's guys have shown up and have been greater than the sum of their parts. And Lou Anarumo is a big part of that. Yeah. It's, it's, and you know, the other person it's huge for, as you were going through that, Jesse Bates gone. Well, who's filling in for Bates? Dax Hill. And there's a whole segment that we're going to get to at some point this off season where I'm going to buy all the Dax Hill stock that people are selling because of special teams nonsense when he's not even going to be on special teams when he has a real impact on this team. Um, because he wasn't great on special teams. I get that. But Dax Hill is going to benefit from being under <laughs> Lou Anarumo for a second straight season and having Robert Livingston and having the continuity there. That's huge for a guy that you're asking to step in and play. I won't, I won't say at an elite level, but play at a high level for the first time, you know, in his second season, but for the, the, the first time of, of him being a starter in the league. That's, that's a lot to ask. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think he'll benefit from that as well. It's uh, it's good. It, it's rosy. And maybe I should have put the hot take chain on, uh, but I, I don't have it on currently. But I'm going to just ask you this question. Do the Bengals have the best coaching staff in the league? And some will say, ah, well, Bill Belichick's the best head coach. Or look what Andy Reid did. Or Well, Andy Reid might lose Eric Bieniemy. Bill Belichick's staff behind him is – it might maybe better now, I guess, with Bill O'Brien, but questionable. And we could go through the coaching staffs, but you could make the argument that the Bengals have three head coaches at least on staff right now, and at least two two more coordinators than the one we're naming than the ones we're naming. Um, it's a pretty damn good staff, I'll say that. I think the competitor is pending Eric Bieniemy, the Chiefs. If Eric Bieniemy's back, I think it's the Chiefs. Sure, that's fair. And, I mean, he's. And, I just talked about their scheme, and he's a big part of that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Andy Reid's obviously great. Steve Spagnuolo is much like Lou in his ability to come up in big moments in the playoffs this year in particular. I know they gave up 35 points to the Eagles, but they made the adjustments in the second half, and we've given Lou Anarumo's unit credit for that uh, throughout his tenure in Cincinnati as well against a really good offense. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say the Chiefs are up there, but in terms of, like, depth – and, and quality, they're right in that conversation if they're not there for, for one of the best staffs in the league. And I'm sure there are others that we're not thinking of that would compete. But sure. the Eagles staff was just broken up. And, and a lot of the other coaching staffs around the league have, have seen shakeups. Like Baltimore might be in the conversation too, to be honest. They, they, they might. have a really good coaching staff. But, but there's the Bengals are right up there too. And, and there's a question. Todd Munkin's still a question mark on right. how he, he hasn't had a ton of success in the NFL. And I like him. By the way, Marvin Lewis was a big fan of Todd Munkin for what it's worth. So it's not the like Bengals just, interviewed Todd Munkin for the head coaching job back when they hired Zach Taylor. Marvin would have hired him to be his OC if he could have way back when. I, I hold uh, him in high esteem. Yeah. And, and certainly the Ravens do too. We'll see there. But uh, obviously, all of our listeners love themselves some Luana Rumo. So is a head coaching job 
on the horizon for him? Is it a matter of when, not if? I've said that about Brian Callahan. What about Lou, who's on the wrong side of 50? He might be on the wrong side of the ball. We'll talk about that next on Locked on Bengals. Today's episode, though, is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. You've heard us talk about the mobile game app, and I can't tell you how much fun it is playing Ultimate Football GM. And the best part is really how detailed it is from hiring coaches, moving on from coaches, trading players, signing players, drafting them, building a team. And, oh, yes, you can get fired. I have not, but I know some Locked On NFL hosts have gotten fired here, or or Locked On podcast hosts in in the NFL circle have, have gotten fired. But no, 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 not me, and hopefully not you. So make sure you check them out right now because Locked On Bengals listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in all caps in the game store. That's Locked On in all capitals. So make sure you check it out today at ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store again, ultimate-gm.com, promo code Locked On in all caps, Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. So Lou Anarumo back with the Bengals, and will he ever get a head coaching job? Why didn't he get this head coaching job in Arizona? Well, Jonathan Gannon's younger, I guess. Lou Anarumo turning 57 in <laughs> 2023. He's so old. I'm kidding, Lou. I'm kidding. I mean, he, he looks – this is unrelated to anything, but excellent for someone in their 50s. I hope I look that healthy when I'm <laughs> – in my 50s, uh, you know, I guess having access to an NFL gym helps for that. But as our friend Mike at Bengals underscore Sands, our film guy who's been on our program in the past, if you've missed those episodes, points out Lou Anarumo doesn't have an NFL bloodline like Shanahan, like these guys that have come up with connections to the league. He started in high school football. He didn't get his first defensive coordinator job until his 50s. And he's, he's certainly not Zach Taylor, right? He's not the young offensive guy connected to an Andy Reid or a Kyle Shanahan or a Sean McVay, or I guess that Colt slash Eagles coaching tree that is now all over the NFL. Yeah. And so it's hard. And, and a couple of other guys that Mike points out are, are similar. These are great tweets from Mike that I'm essentially just reading. So go follow him on Twitter, by the way. But Dean Pease and Vic Fangio, a couple other guys that – had similar careers in the NFL and it took them a long time to get head coaching jobs or they never did. So there are a lot of factors stacked against Lou Mm -hmm. in his search for a head coaching job. And the other factor, not only is he not an offensive coach, but we have all this evidence at this point that says essentially offense dictates results way more than defense dictates results. Just look at the Super Bowl for a recent example of this, right? Where there's two defenses that are pretty playing pretty well and the final score is 30 something to 30 something. Mm-hmm. Defenses just don't control the game the way they used to. Rules mm-hmm. continue to skew toward the offense. Player safety is important but continues to benefit the offense in most ways. And so you're coming off of two great years if you're Luana Romo with signature performances against the elite quarterbacks of the NFL and your defensive coordinator again, after all that. Yeah. It's it a um, little, it's gotta be a little frustrating and, and a little, uh, I'm sure he's got a great attitude. I would be a little demotivated after that. That'd be tough. Yeah. The, the idea of being a head coach was this, the, was this his shot? Was this the, the scenario where it happens? And you could look at it look at it one of two ways because there's been plenty of times where I've been passed over, not hired, whatever the case is for a job that no one knows about. No one has any idea about it, right? But it happens. It sucks that it's in the public eye, by the way. That part of it is as much as anything is, it, especially if you get down to be a finalist and you've done all these interviews and spent all this time just to not get it and everyone know that you didn't get it because you were up for it. That part, I agree with you. But... I could also convince myself, and this is probably what you do just to keep yourself sane as a head coach. You just look at that situation in Arizona, a lot of question marks. I like Kyler's talent. Don't love that. The attitude certainly doesn't seem like he has the, the best attitude. He's not necessarily Joe Burrow on the sideline, fair to say. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy. I just don't think he's that type of leader. So you could convince yourself that part of it. 
at the same time, you're right. It, it seemed like Arizona's really the only the only team that was hell bent on on hiring a, a defensive minded coach. It just seemed like it. A lot of their candidates were they had Brian Flores in there. Of course, they talked to Callahan, but there was a lot of defensive minds that they were talking to. And so, how many organizations moving forward are going to think that? Now, if Lou does what Lou's done and overcomes and his defense plays at a really high level in 2023, I think he's got a shot. But I, I certainly could see the path where the Bengals take a slight step back on defense because they're a little younger. They lose some of these veterans and he doesn't get the the looks. I mean, it's not like he got eight looks. He got two looks and there wasn't a ton of vacancies this cycle, but it is worth discussing. Um, let, let me ask you this. If you had to rank them and let's do, let's just do the coordinators, the three coordinators on this staff in, in terms of when they would get a head coaching job, if they would, if, if you had to rank them, in, and let's just assume all three would, but rank them in order, who would get one first, second, and third? It seems like it'd be Brian Lou then Darren Simmons. Uh, I mean, Darren Simmons wasn't even in the conversation this cycle. And and he's really respected around the league, but you don't see – there. there's maybe two special teams coordinators interviewed for head coaching jobs this year. And you, mm-hmm. you look at the coaches representing teams, head coaching teams, in, in the final four, final eight, of this year's playoffs, they're all offensive guys. Mm-hmm. Almost. Not all of them. There's there, there's what McDermott's the exception. Yeah, I think you're right, right? I think that's it. Yeah. No, it, you're right. And so one with Darren Simmons, I agree. He by the way, his special teams unit did not have a great year this year, period. But could there be a path where they find the right punter this offseason. Maybe they for get special a- teams, I have to believe that it's not related as much to their results as it is to like Darren is a very respected coach and leader. And, you know, for, for those reasons, he's in consideration for head coach. Sure. Like, and, and, I- and maybe, maybe that's it. And, and I think they, the answer probably is Brian Lou than Darren. But if I had to wager on one of them being here, or two, I guess two of them being here in 2025 or 2024, I think there's still a pretty good shot lose back. And that's not, that doesn't really have anything to do with him is my point is this is the league. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a, the, the Gannon hire is weird. It might work out in Arizona, but it was weird. They were clearly hell bent on, on getting him. It's why the, it's why it looked uh, or took so long because if you were going to hire Anna Rumo, you should have done it a week and a half ago and let him put right. together a staff and let him get going instead of wait till, you know, Monday after the Super Bowl, Tuesday after the Super Bowl when he's been he's been out for two weeks. So I don't know. I don't know if he'll get that shot, but I, I think he's going to be motivated, more motivated than ever to continue to prove himself. It, he may have to lick his wounds for a day or two, but coaches, players, they bounce back really quick, right? A lot of players that get cut bounce back really quick and they get pissed off and motivated. Not that Lou got cut, of course, but I think he'll have that same reaction. He's got that Staten Island blood in him, man. <laughs> I mean, if a group of people were ever going to have that dog in them, isn't, isn't that it? I mean, there's probably a lot of groups of people that have that dog in them, but sure. Lou certainly yeah, does. That's all yeah. I'm saying. He also, I mean, we, we don't talk about his history very much. You probably haven't talked about his history since the Bengals hired him, but, you know, Merchant Marine Academy, Harvard, before Marshall and Purdue. Lou, Lou's been around a little bit, man. I mean, the guy has some some skins yeah. on the wall at this point. But you're right. I think it comes down to the NFL and, and philosophies around, like, let's get the offensive guys so we don't lose our play caller. Mm-hmm because we want to maintain continuity for our offense and our quarterback. You see that for, for a lot of the guys getting hired around the league and you see it paying off. Like I mentioned seven, I think it was seven out of the eight last head coaches in the NFL had an offensive background this year in the playoffs with McDermott being the exception. I'm pretty sure I, I could be, I could be wrong about that, but like most of them play callers too. Certainly Zach, Zach Taylor and, uh, and Andy Reed. Right. So you can see why NFL teams are hiring offensive guys. I hope Lou gets a shot. 
these guys all, well, Brian and Lou certainly, and I would say Darren Simmons probably deserves looks as well, but Brian and Lou, based on our conversations with them, the success they've had as coaches with the Bengals, the growth they've shown, deserve head coaching opportunities. But they're all back for Cincinnati in 2023, so let's wrap up that conversation to finish the show next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So whether you want to wager on LeBron's point scored, rebounds, the Lakers making the playoffs, not making the playoffs, the Warriors making another run, Luka and Kyrie actually playing a little defense and maybe picking up a win. You can do all of those things and more at FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. In the NFL. All the coaches back for the Bengals, James. The continuity we've talked about, excellent on both sides of the ball. The communication with the head coaches, the, the way that they've built a culture together, I think it also makes them more readily prepared to target whoever it is they want to target in free agency. You have that continuity and that understanding of the kind of player that you want Yep. on your team. And we're going to have to spend a lot of time, I think in the near future talking about how should the Bengals approach free agency this year? Because all these coaches are back uh -huh. and, and all the chatter on Twitter. And it's probably Joe Goodberry's fault, who I've, who I've, who I've been talking to today before recording this show. And in his tweet is it's time to go all in as soon as the news broke that, that Lou is back with the Bengals, but he might have a point. But regardless mm -hmm. of, of that, and, and there's tons of questions here. Why would you go all in this year if you're the Bengals? Should they go all in if they're, if, if, in 2023? Will they go all in in 2023? How will they go all in in 2023? We're not going to get into those today. That'll be a show in the near future. But they're more equipped to make those choices because they have the same leadership in place. They have the same this... systems in place. This team has been the best free agency team. Best team in free agency. Seriously over the past three seasons since Joe Burrow got drafted, you know, the month prior. And I get it. Trey Waynes. Oh yeah. DJ reader, monster success, mm -hmm. smashing success. Trey Hendrickson, same thing. One of the best values in the league. Chido Bayouzie, the best value in the league. Probably. I mean, Mike Hilton, what a get. I mean, Outside of rookie just, deals. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm talking free agency. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Chido Bayouzie was a number one corner, three years, 21 million stepped in and was just on Jamar chase and training camp. Part of the reason why he was struggling with the dropsies as a rookie was because he was on a woozy island. And I don't think anyone, including myself, realized that that place existed. Well, it did and does, even though he's healing up right now. I mean, just a, a tremendous, tremendous value. They've been so good in free agency. Hayden Hurst, why pay CJ Uzama three years, 24 million, when you can find Hayden Hurst uh, a, a really solid tight end for three and a half million dollars for a season? They've done it. They found it. Ted Karras, what a value, right? They've done it. Alex Kappa certainly delivered during his first season with the Bengals. So they've found the dudes, and they need to continue to do that. It's a big part of it, especially because they're going to have to balance that with obviously re-signing and extending uh, some of their own guys this offseason. And that's the fun part, and you're right. They've done a good job of identifying – a lot of that has to do with the coaching staff as much as anything. And uh, it's good to see that they're all back and they know what they like, what they don't like. No one is happier right now, nobody, than Zach Taylor. That dude, he might have jumped up and down when he hurt because I'm sure he was oh. thinking he was at, losing, at least losing one guy or two, and he didn't lose anyone. It's bittersweet, right? And no matter what, it's bittersweet. Either you're upset that you've lost a guy, but you're happy that he's got an opportunity, or you're upset well, sure. that he didn't get the opportunity and you're happy that he's back. Well, selfishly jumps up and down, right? right? Yeah. Of course. Like, as as like, we all are, right? Like we're celebrating the fact in this episode that Lou's back while also lamenting the fact that he didn't get a shot. But it, it, that's always how – that's how the next few off seasons are going to be, no matter how it happens, right? You're either going to lose guys or they're going to come back. 
Yeah. So and and that's exactly. We're not, this isn't a a celebration that Lou didn't get a head coaching job. It's a celebration that you get to hang on to him for one more year. And he gets to talk to him for another year, just like because he gets at, to talk to Brian for another year. Yeah, because at some point, that's probably not going to be the case, and, and we all know that. So, yeah. And it's harder, I can tell you, as as the host, one of the hosts, sorry, of the Locked On Bengals podcast to get Zach Taylor as a guest than it is for us to get Brian Callahan and Lou Anarumo. And it'll be impossible for us to get Brian Callahan and Lou Anarumo when they're the head coach for other teams. So there's that. Selfish. Maybe not impossible, but what would what would the – logic behind it be <laughs> i mean yeah hey, maybe not impossible the- because they know us with yeah like hey let's talk to the head coach of the arizona cardinals on the locked on bengals podcast like we don't get through we don't get through arizona media relations with that request no probably not yeah probably not um, so I, I was to gonna name other to, cities right? and other potential destinations like next year and i'm just i'm not gonna do that we're going to put a bow on this one lou we're, we're glad you're in town and uh, I can't wait to see you at the combine. Yeah, combine coming up, huh? A couple mm-hmm. weeks, something like that. Yeah, end of the month. That's going to do it for this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Like I said, we've got to talk about the Bengals' approach to this offseason. We talked a little bit last week, and if you missed it, go back and check it out. The contract extensions and some proposals with Andre Perota for T. Higgins for Joe Burrow. We did a whole episode on what those contracts could look like what the Bengals cap situation could be after those hypothetical extensions get done. And with this kind of continuity, this kind of youth, these many players still on rookie deals as part of the core and in rookie deals for the foreseeable future at a lot of spots. Sure. There's some veterans coming up that will have contracts due, but a lot of that core is secured and there are very few big, big cap obligations in the future. So yes, you got to hit on the draft, but Maybe there is an opportunity here, James, for the Bengals to once again do business differently. Once again, we're asking the Bengals to do business differently a little bit and continue to try to push that Super Bowl window and maximize their chances. And they came just short this year, but they did get better. And what if they had pushed it a little bit harder? Had they had the opportunity to do so? And they've been saving money, so maybe that opportunity is coming. So... Obviously a lot there to talk about and dig into. We'll do that in the near future on this podcast. So thanks for listening today and we'll talk to you again soon. Hooday and have a good one.